Hello, community. So great to see you. Today we talk about agentic system. What is the latest in research? Because you are here at Discover AI, the beautiful YouTube channel that gives you answers. So let's have a look. Agent flow. An in the flow agentic system optimization for the effective planning and tool use of multi agent system. Isn't this beautiful? So, a trainable tool integrated agentic framework designed to overcome the scalability and generalization limits of today's tool augmented reasoning approaches. And you know what we're going to do? You're not going to believe this. Because it is complex, we will break down the problem into four simpler sequential steps. And for each single step, we will use an agent. Um, I'm loving it. So here we have the paper. This is beautiful. This is a dream paper. This is a gorgeous paper. You have to have a look. Stanford, Stanford Artificial Intelligence, Stanford University, Human Centered AI, Texas, San Diego, Lambda. Gorgeous. We have the code. We have the model. We have a demo. I'm going to show you the demo. We run your demo here. Visualization. Everything is here. So where are we? You know, we have the role of the tool integrated reasoning model where we have this big GPT-5 system that know everything and can do everything until the fail. And then we have here the world of the training free agentic system. And here we have, you know, we just add an agent. No, we have a specialist, a researcher, and we have a technician, we have a quality checker. And yeah, they cannot adopt on the fly. Yeah? And then there's this beautiful third option. And now in this third option, we have a new method. And this new method they call agent flow. And they say, imagine you have an assembly line, you want to build your own PC first time. So now we have it that there's a dynamic learning team leader. This is not a planning agent. The leader doesn't just pass the instruction, but the leader here, with a particular memory we're going to talk about, observes the entire process and decides at each step which other agent, which other specialist that it knows exactly what it to do, to task here, the next task, and also MCP on everything and tool use. Great. So... This leader is now being trained on the job and this leader has now three other agents and a multiple uh, spectrum here of tools. Now, in essence here, this is an inflow optimization. It's a team of specialized models orchestrated here by the planning agent that learns and improves on the final outcome of its live multi-step interactions. And of course, the other agents are more or less frozen because otherwise we would have a complexity that AI cannot handle. So... You can imply this principle of decompose your own complex agent task into multiple smaller, less complex agent tasks, isolating here, like the, done here at Stanford, the strategic decision-making component, the agent that makes here the strategy decisions, into a single agent. And then we use here a reinforcement learning training, but we not just go with a DPO or PPO or GRPO. They developed here a flow-specific GRPO this is beautiful. We're going to have a look at this while, of course, keeping the other modules here like code execution, everything frozen, because we only will train the strategist. As I told you, we will have now a GRPO that is based on this flow, an elegant, powerful solution, broadcasting a single trajectory level success signal to every step. It bypasses here the need for brittle intermediate reward functions. And thereby we can make our agentic systems much more adaptive. So let's have a look. Two elements, at first the framework of agent flow, what is it? And then they say here for the reinforcement learning, we don't just go with a group refined policy optimization. Yeah, we stay with a group relative, but we go now with a flow base and we're going to have a look. What is the difference? But let's start here with the framework agent flow. Of course, you know, like everything else in AI, we define it now not as a partially observable, but as a pure Markov decision process. It consists of four key modules, agents, shared memory is common to both of them, to all four of them. So here we go. They built here a beautiful Gradio exercise here. Look at Hugging Face Spaces, Agent Flow, Agent Flow. You have everything. You have the planner model, the trained model. This is also available to you. Here, Agent Flow Planner 7 billion. And then for the other three elements, for the executor, for the verifier, and for the generator model, they use here a QN 2.5 7B instruct model. Port 8000, maximum number of steps, maximum number of seconds. When you run it for the very first time, I had to wait five minutes, was doing nothing, and then suddenly there was a result. But then the second task and the third task almost work immediately. So you have a delay of five minutes. Don't ask me what's happening. But... Don't give up. 
After five minutes, the system works just perfectly. Tools, we activate all the tools that we have, the base generator tool, the Python coder tool, the Google search tool, the Wikipedia search tool, and the web search tool. And I'm going to show you here this demo in a minute. Let's come back here to the theoretical understanding. The most important is the action planner. This is our agent, the brain of the operation. And this will be the only model that we will train with reinforcement learning, GRPO, flow GRPO. It observes the current state of the complete system. We have a query. We have an available tool set, Google search. And the entire history is now stored in the particular memory. And then it produces here an action item A out of the set of all possible action that includes, of course, selecting a specific tool and formulating now a sub-goal for this tool and a verification did this tool reach the sub-goal. And therefore, we have a complete policy by theta, where we have as an input the query, as an input the complete tool set, as an input the complete sequence of all the actions and decisions in the memory model, and we generate a new action that defines the policy pi with all the parameters theta. You see? Easy. And then we have the three frozen element, the tool executor, Pla takes the planner action, invokes here a chosen tool, let's say a Python or whatever, produces here a code result. Then we have a verifier that says, hey, was the, turn, the, rust, the task run completely? We have a binary signal only, success, no success. And if we have success, we have a generator that generates now the final output. The most beautiful element here is an evolving stacked memory. This is here the key to the state tracking and especially then to the reward tracking. More about this in a minute. So after each turn t, the memory is updated deterministically. So you have here a function of the memory, the action at a particular turn, then the expected results at a, at a particular turn, and the binary verification, success or non-success at a particular turn. So this creates now a structured explicit log of the entire reasoning process in our memory. And this is so beautiful because the entire process generates now a trajectory tau. And you know it, joint probability is able to be calculated with this simple formula. Now we have a beautiful GitHub agent flow here, Lupine Tech, and we have an MIT license. Beautiful. Just yesterday, everything was updated. Have a look at this. It is beautiful. You have... Slack, coverage, website, hugging face, radio, archive, everything is available for you. But I told you there is also here this methodology for the flow GRPO, and I have to tell you there is an asterisk to this. So let's talk about the asterisk later. Let's just understand what is not this flow GRPO. So instead of creating complex intermediate reward in a long reasoning trace, GRPO assigns now the same final outcome based reward underlined three times, the final outcome-based reward to every single action here in the trajectory. This is a massive limitation. Let me talk about this in a minute. So therefore, the reward of any step is defined as the reward of the final output. This is clear where, yeah, everything is clear. We have an answer. Oh, this is the output. And of course, we have to have a ground truth why. And this, is, if you want, converts here in a nice way to multi-turn credit assignment problem into a reduced complexity, into a series of independent single-turn policy updates. Flow GRPO builds here on the group relative PO, and this has a beautiful optimization. We go with group rollouts, we go with PPO clipping, and we have a group normalized advantage function now. This is now very, yeah, if you're not familiar what it means, I have here a particular video, EI Matt explained, and the group normalized advantage has here a very simple formula. So what it does, it tells you the planner module of age and not just every trajectory was is good with a reward equal top, but how good it was relative to all the other terms, of course, we have a group a relative reward structure. Now let's have a look at this. Now, as you see in blue, we have the agent flow without the flow optimized GRPO, and in red we have this agent flow with the flow GRPO, completely optimized. And you see here for a lot of different benchmarks, whatever. The agent flow method itself in blue is inside and agent flow optimized with flow GRPO has an even better performance. Look at this. Now, you can also have a look here to other LLMs. If you use here a pure QVAN, not multi-agent, GPT-4 Omni, search R1, Autogen, and here in red here, the last one is, of course, our new agent flow with flow GRPO. Now, you see here AIM24. What a beautiful performance here. And if you look at GPT-4 Omni here, you see here with 13% and here 
our new agent flow with 40%. What a difference in the performance, of course, no? Clear. If you want to see this, whatever I just explained to you here in one visualization, here you have it. You have your query, your human query, then you have the available tool set where you have everything from a Google search, from an internet search, from a database search, from a Wikipedia search, from whatever. You have then your optimization circles and your member. Only the planner will have the training with FlowGRPO and the other ones are frozen. Otherwise, they would learn. So here we are live, agent flow, agent flow, and you see I have a question. Hey, explain why in-context learning can override the parametric knowledge of an LLM. Because of what reason is it? And you see, we're running here with agent flow. We're already at step three. We have a look at it in detail and hear the final answer. So let's compare this to say, understand why action step, conduct a search using Google search tool and find academic papers and articles discussing ICL. Action step two, perform another search to find recent research paper of ICL. Action step three, conduct a third search to gather more detailed insight into the specific mechanism of ECL overriding parametric knowledge. And here's the answer. Okay, it can, yeah, this is facilitated by the architecture. Additional, and keep it a strong bias. Yeah, but where's the answer? The model can also construct context-dependent hidden activation. Yeah, of course, this mechanism enables ICL to provide high relevant and context-specific outputs. Yeah, but where's the answer? I said, because of what reason? So, what happened? Did it not find the answer? Or did it not understand here the complexity of my query? Interesting. So let's maybe go back a step and have a look again at the very beginning because we are looking, this is possible because, so in-context learning can override parametric knowledge because the model dynamically adapts its behavior to the immediate input provided in the prompt. Yeah, but why? How? In, with what statistical features? I mean, it can is, okay, facilitated by the self-attention mechanism. Yes, of course, what else in a transformer architecture? and has a strong bias toward the most immediate and explicit information in the prompt, leading to the suppression of the pre-trained parametric knowledge? I hope not, because otherwise the parametric knowledge of the LM would be useless. Uh-oh. So if you want, the formal definition of the paper is this one. This is exactly identical to what we just learned. And if you want to see this here in a schema, this is it for GRPO. And the flow GRPO formulation here, a complete mathematical definition is this. Great. Now let's do an example. And they provide one and they say, okay, so on the left side, we have the agent flow without the GRPO training. And then if they do the GRPO training here, of course, if the non-GRPO optimization where you have no action steps four to nine, where you have loops, 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 until you find the right answer. And the answer is then the element that you transfer over here to the flow GRPO fine tuning. Yes, then, of course, here in step four, you have here the found the right answer. And you see, you have the correct result and given to only agent flow. So agent flow without flow GRPO, they come to incorrect solutions. So therefore, maybe a good idea to use it in combination. So therefore, this agent flow and the flow GRPO framework, what a nice, beautiful step in the right direction for building truly capable and autonomous AI agent system, multi-agent system. Great. Bridges here the gap between the raw power of monolithic LLMs, like our monster GPT-5 LLMs, and the structural benefits that we have if we design highly specialized multi-agent systems. See also OpenAI, Agent Builder. If you want, the beauty of this flow GPO lies in its simplicity. But simplicity also has a negative effect to it, no? Because we reframe here again the same pattern as always. A multi-term problem as now a reduced complexity problem as a series of simpler single-term problems with a shared global outcome. And the authors make here a notoriously different, difficult reinforcement learning problem tractable and stable. But you have to pay for this, of course. Yeah? Plus, remember, we are looking here at a reward signal that is still a binary and it requires a final ground truth. So if you have multi-open question, maybe not the best and easiest application you can find. Okay, I think it's time to talk about all the limitations. This is a next step method. It's a simplified method. It's a fast method. But let's have a look. What are limitations? Why did my example not came to the right conclusion? Now this asterisk here. 
Now, what is this, the core assumption of our flow GRPO? What is this asterisk? The core assumption is that a successful trajectory, every single action in this trajectory was a good choice and therefore will receive the maximum reward of the final outcome reward. And of course, if we have a failed trajectory, every single action, maybe the first two actions were genius, but just action number three and four were really horrible, bad, doesn't matter. Now the complete action sequence gets a negative rating. Now in reality, this is not true, because if you have a 10-step action sequence or a 10-step reasoning sequence, if the outcome is negative, maybe the first eight steps were great, but in step nine, there was a massive failure and therefore step 10 is incorrect. So this core assumption is only true in a very limited case. Now the model can overcome this in a statistical way only. Ne? It can overcome this noisy signal statistically over a very large number of diverse rollouts of diverse learning then maybe it can happen. But if you have, as a default, a very long action sequence or a very long reasoning sequence, this is even not going to happen. Plus, you remember we talked about if there is here an action sequence or a reasoning sequence, you do have those famous aha moments where you say, ah, now I understand the question, or the AI says, hey, now I found the right repo on GitHub. Or there are some steps where it just says, okay, and now I just transcribed this over. Different values here in those different, if you want, discovery moments here of new insights. But the Flow GRPO reward scheme treats here this critical uh -huh step moment equally as I uh, just transcribe is over. So it doesn't provide a stronger signal for the truly pivotal moments here in a reasoning chain. It neglects what are the important moments and what are just input output, for example. What a pity. Plus, the entire performance of all what we just discussed depends here on the quality of the judgment of the final reward function. And in this case, we use another LLM as a judge. So we have one LLM for the planner, we have three LLMs here for the executor and verifier and summarizer, and now we have also an LLM as a judge. So you see, if there's anything going wrong or any hallucination in any of those LLMs, forget about it. Plus, the transformation or the simplification we, we, we do in this example here, so we transform it into a series of single turn simpler complexity updates, is possible because in the memory we have a complete, if you want, log of all the complete steps of the system at every step. So what they do, they ought to simplify here the credit assignment problems in a generalization, but not the state representation problem. And finally, that for this complex reasoning task, like, I don't know, AIM-24, that are not really complex, you know, that are known complexities in known benchmark, that are rather low complexity, the stability and the simplicity gained by this approach of our flow agent approach here has so many benefits, it outweighs here its inherent loss of precision in the credit assignment. So we have a positive factor and we have a negative factor. And for those simpler tasks, the simplicity that we have now, the four agents, they have now a better general, if you want, benchmark performance. And therefore, those loss of precision elements are not as dominant and crush the result again. How this will swap over in real complex situation, in real complex reasoning traces, is currently open. So you see, what a beautiful study, but it gives us a lot of new ideas. And if you're interested, why not subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.